Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 5. Watch out if you sell things online. The state of North Dakota might be watching. Good evening and thanks for joining us. Even if you don't consider yourself a retailer, the North Dakota Tax Commissioner is cracking down on certain people who sell things online. This includes Craigslist, online garage sales, and even Facebook. Valley News Team's Nicole Johnson explains. It has the group rules right at the Online, a popular way to get rid of things around the house and make a few bucks. Stuff she gets at garage sales a lot of times, you know, sell that, uh, you know, stuff we don't need. Just life. If you're like John Cordes's wife, you're considered a casual seller. You should be fine in the eyes of the law to keep on posting as much as you want. Why is they close three dollars? It's the retailers the state is after. But the difference between casual and retail isn't as clear cut as you might think. It boils down to your intent. If you buy something intending on reselling or trading it, technically you need to collect sales tax and file paperwork. It's got to be difficult and there's got to be a high threshold, uh, you know, to, to a absolutely prove without any doubt. The North Dakota Tax Commissioner is sending out letters to those they believe are retailers and aren't filing their paperwork. You could face a class A misdemeanor. It's just another, you know, bunch of uh, red tape to, uh, you know, to have to deal with. Our lives are complicated enough as it is. Online, some people aren't too happy, saying we pay enough taxes. Others say it won't really impact them buying and selling things around the house. The goal, according to the tax office, isn't to take legal action, more to educate people since this line of selling has gotten so popular. Nicole Johnson, Valley News Live. And in Minnesota, they say as long as it's a person, not a business, selling something, you don't need to collect sales tax. We have some new information on the body found in a farm field on Monday. Today, the Midwest Medical Examiner's Office confirmed that it was the body of Laura Schwindemann who was a missing teen. It's still unknown how Schwindemann died. She was last seen alive on October 14th in Alexandria, Minnesota. Anyone with information is urged to contact the Douglas County Sheriff's Office. Well, it's Friday and it's Halloween weekend. Are we going to be for any spooky weather? Let's check in with Hutch Johnson to find out. Hutch? Quite the contrary. We're going to be treated to some very gorgeous weather heading into the weekend. Now, we can't roll out a few sprinkles, including this evening. If you're heading out to that Friday night football game or just spending some time outdoors, know that there are a few showers firing up in our southern and eastern counties. This will quickly exit to the east. Otherwise, we'll see partly cloudy skies this evening and temperatures that will be pretty steady falling from around that 50 degree mark into the upper 40s for most of the evening. It'll be breezy, so bring the jacket. And if you are in west central Minnesota, have that umbrella handy for those early evening sprinkles. We will have a look at your weekend forecast. That includes uh, an outlook for the trick-or-treaters. It also includes that turn your clock back and a check out of the weather next week because we could see a little bit more flaky weather in the forecast details here. Stephanie? in just a few moments. Flaky weather. Well, at least the weekend will be good for all those little, little ghosts and goblins Hard out there. Hard to see flakes with temperatures near yeah. 60. That's a hint. <laughs> all right. Thank yeah. you, Hutch. We have some new developments now on the Jacob Wetterling case. Before suspect Daniel Heinrich lived in Annandale, Minnesota, he called Painesville home. And in the 1980s, several boys were assaulted there as well. Those cases remain a mystery. But as Bua Zhang reports, it's still on the minds of many people. It was a time when everybody really started watching their kids a lot more. It's a mystery that has haunted Painesville. Authorities say from 1986 to 1988, several young boys ages 12 to 16 were assaulted. No one was ever charged. But a search warrant for Danny Heinrich's home has residents wondering what might have happened all those years ago. The name was familiar. At Painesville Total Entertainment Center, owner Jean Soini recognized Heinrich's name after hearing it on the news. So I looked at my computer and sure enough, he'd been a customer that came in here, had his address and everything in there. So Jean remembers Heinrich as a quiet guy, a loner and not outgoing. She believes she may have sold him blank VHS tapes. Now she fears what those tapes may have been used for. It's kind of creepy. Authorities say in the late 80s, Heinrich lived down the street at Plaza Apartments. There were eight reported assaults of boys while he lived there. All happened within blocks of his apartment. But he was never named a suspect. The unknown 
known kept parents like Jean and Sherry Paninsky, who was a young mother of an eight-year-old boy then, on edge. Groups of kids stayed together. Um, parents watched over their children much more conscientiously conscientiously than they had done before, I think. Their boys now have kids of their own, but these mothers can't quite shake the fear they felt 30 I... years ago. It just scares you to death, even if it's not your own child. Heinrich's brother still lives in the apartment, the same room Danny had when he lived there. Now, reporter Zhang knocked on the door, but no one answered. One resident that she spoke with knew both brothers and got emotional when she asked about the Heinrichs saying it's all too much to handle right now. Well, no doubt many parents and kids will be roaming neighborhoods to trick or treat this weekend. But how do you know who's behind the door? Some parents have asked how to check where sex offenders are located. Minnesota and North Dakota have laws that require sex offenders to register with their local police department. In Fargo, there's a tool from the city allowing you to search for registered sex offenders in your neighborhood and to see their locations on a map. Moorhead and West Fargo do not have a map, but do have a list of offenders with their names and addresses. For a link for more information about the sex offenders in your neighborhood, head to valleynewslive.com and click on this story. More than 6,000 federal inmates in jail on drug charges are set to be released from prison today. That includes 23 inmates coming to North Dakota. 54 in Minnesota, 17 in South Dakota. According to the Washington Post, a third of the inmates are foreign citizens and will be transferred to U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement and eventually deported to their home countries. The largest number of inmates, 597, are getting released in Texas, with Florida getting the second largest number, 310, according to the Bureau of Prisons.